our research on raising awareness for veterans' issues. And during our research, we've discovered that throughout time, there have been 16 and a half million um, U.S. citizens served during war. We also learned that 0.4% of America's population has served in war. Um, I'd like to say at one point, today was a big part of our senior project. We hosted a bake sale during both lunches. Very successful. We raised $131, and all the proceeds are going to the Wounded Warrior Project. So if you guys came or saw us in there, I'd like to thank you very much. Yep, like we said, the wartime veterans are veterans who served during time of conflict, and right now that number in all of America's history is up to 16 and a half million. 0.4% um, of the current U.S. population are active military personnel. That does not seem like a lot, but they do mean a lot to people. They are family members, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers. <coughs> yep. Bless you. That speaker there. some of our veterans mean to their families. Obviously, it's hard for us to put our own emotions into people that we may not even know, such as random veterans, but we do, we should honor them. They come back from what could be very difficult times that the normal civilian may never understand. The sad part is not all homecomings are happy. Many veterans return with physical or mental wounds. 
We have another video, another video to show you about the wounds that are not easily noticeable, such as traumatic injuries like PTSD or TBI. What you have released is unlike anything we've ever faced. PTSD from serving my country. All I want to do is go back to Iraq to feel normal again. I have PTSD from sexual assault trauma, and I'm worried that because of it, I won't ever be able to have a normal relationship. I have PTSD and have nightmares every night, so I avoid sleeping as much as possible. Today I was diagnosed with PTSD. Now I'm feeling more anxious and depressed about it. I'm not looking forward to the stigma that comes along with it. I live with PTSD from Iraq every day. Nobody knows, they just think I'm antisocial, boring, and a bit strange. I can't keep a relationship going because of my PTSD. There's gotta be a girl out there who's willing to live past it for me. I have PTSD, and when people find out, they ask where I served. When I tell them I wasn't in the military, they dismiss it like I'm lying. I have severe PTSD, but I'm afraid to get a diagnosis. I don't want a label, a handout, or sympathy. I just want help. I secretly live with post-traumatic stress disorder. I try to act carefree, but I live on alert. I hate it when my PTSD acts up, and I'm suddenly afraid of everyone. My trust issues make everything so hard, and I wish I could just forget my past. But my PTSD makes it impossible. My ex left me because I have PTSD and wouldn't open up about my deployment. My PTSD makes me feel alone and unwanted, which makes me angry at people. PTSD has made me a prisoner in my old mind. I thought my PTSD was getting better, but then the flashback started up again. I'm exhausted. I have PTSD. My service dog saved my life. He gives me unconditional love and a reason to live. Now, for our project, our big question was, how can we raise awareness for veterans' issues? To do this, we set out to speak with veterans to first share their story, and to help us contribute to our community and raise money for the Wounded Warrior Project. Obviously, we did that today, and we had a good amount, and that was amazing. But why did we choose to do this? Because we have our own personal interest in the military, and as well as we noticed the alarming rate of PTSD diagnosis in our veterans today. <clears throat> uh, during the annotated bibliography, we did a little bit of research on what PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder was and how it can be significant to your relationships at home or in the video, relationships with like a girlfriend or boyfriend. And this just show is kind of like having some trouble. But also on the annotated bibliography, we are going, we were talking about going to the uh, memorial downtown on Memorial Day and we're gonna hand out flags we're gonna give them to people so they can stick them in the ground and think of a loved one that has lost their lives in war. Now for our community that we chose to go with, we chose the US military veterans as they were the focal point of our whole project. And we also chose our class because we're presenting right now in front of our class and as well as Wednesday after the farewell tour we will be showing a video of interviews with actual veterans and answering questions that we ask them. And we just ask for full support from the class and just not to put this off. Because after this year, we all are going on to our own paths and the military is always an option. And we just want everyone to know and be aware of what really can come from that. So in conclusion, really we learned that it's not easy. We put out questionnaires at first for veterans to answer, and some of, the, some of the answers were amazing. We asked about if they feel veterans are underappreciated, 
and some have said yes, and some have said that this normal the normal citizen does not owe anything to a veteran. And I just thought it was interesting to learn that veterans look at themselves differently than normal civilians do. And it was, it was interesting to just learn about everything and go along this, and it really helped teach us that life isn't easy, and you can choose your own path, but you can't choose what that path does to you. Thank you.